year, I'm presuming President Biden will be reelected. It won't be any easier in the midterm. So there's never a good time to leave. But uh, there's never the wrong time either when it comes mm-hmm. to this. It's a personal decision long before it's a political calculation. And for me, the personal choice became pretty apparent over the last couple of months. It was time for me to come home. Um, how much did the fact that you were looking around and seeing your colleagues retiring, headed for the ex- exits, factor into your decision? I mean, you've talked about the dysfunction in the current Congress. If it's the serious people leaving and the kind of less serious people staying, I imagine that makes it a less appealing workplace to stick around. Yeah, that's part of the calculation because in the personal decision, is whether I will continue to make the trade-off between the loss of connection to family and friends right here at home to go do the work in Washington. And when when what we've seen is not just partisanship, but as, as I guess we'd all describe it, dysfunction. What we're seeing right now is, is not a problem of partisanship. It's a problem that the particular Republican Party, as it's currently constituted, is incapable of governing and incapable of compromise unless, you know, held to an extreme deadline, that's no way to work. So yeah, it's part of the calculation, but again, it's only in the sense that I weigh continuing to work in this environment against, you know, continuing to be at ho- not at home for more than half of the time. And that's that was too much to take. I totally get that. I, I'm curious, I mean, you, you talked about presuming President Biden wins in 2024. I don't know if that's a presumption you can just make. I mean, talk to me a little bit about your state. Are you concerned at the way Michigan has grown apparently more competitive as we look ahead to next year? Yeah, it, it, it will be a battleground state, no question about it. And we've proven that we know how to win. We did it in 2018. We did it again in 2020. We obviously did it in 2022, uh, 2024 has a unique set of challenges. It's a presidential year. But I think it's really important to not misread uh, some of the polling. The polling measures not only the current race horse, or horse race, I should say, but also measures the enthusiasm in right. the moment. And one thing I've seen is that this is going to be a race more than likely between Donald Trump and President Biden. President Biden's supporters are more thoughtful, maybe more circumspect. President Trump's supporters treat this like a religion, like he's a religious figure. There's no dissuading them of his perfection. And so their enthusiasm at this early stage is always going to show up as being more pronounced than those of us who kind of sit back and weigh the equities before casting a ballot. So So, it's going to be a tough race, but but I don't think we should get too tangled up in these polling, uh, the recent polling. Then let me ask you this. Is it a 2023 issue or a 2024 issue? You represent... And part of Michigan, where you have a lot of uh, Arab American, Muslim American constituents concerned about the way that the Israel Hamas war is being conducted and the White House's response to it. Do you worry about those Americans turning their back on this president in 2024? Yeah, it's a legitimate concern because I know there's a lot of concern within the Arab American and Muslim, broader Muslim community uh, regarding uh, the U.S. support for Israel in this moment. Now, I happen to be a supporter of Israel's rights to, right to defend itself. But I share many of the concerns uh, that many of my uh, constituents have raised with me uh, that we can't be a blank check, that Israel has to be held to international standards and be accountable to international law. And the targeting of citizen uh, civilian populations is completely unacceptable. So I get that. And it is a political challenge. For me, the conclusion I come to about my criticism of Israel has nothing to do with the politics of the moment. I think that's probably true for President Biden, but it will potentially have an effect. Does he need, I, to, do, does he need to do more to address it going forward? I think the real question is how this issue gets resolved. Yeah. You know, it's my hope that now we're in four days of, of a so-called ceasefire in order to get, you know, the hostages released and get humanitarian aid delivered. I, uh, I understand another two days have been added Look, if we can do this one day at a time and negotiate peace, maybe the United States can assert itself and try to find a path forward for that region. I don't believe that uh, that a pure military solution will ever be the solution to the problem. We've got to get to a place where we're negotiating. I hope the president, uh, in, you know, takes the 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 bully pulpit that he has on the global stage and tries to encourage that we get to that point sooner rather than later. 
Um, last question, I think. Talking about deal making here, we've been talking a lot about the aid package that's going to have to work its way through the House. Obviously, the House has already passed a Israel aid bill that's probably going nowhere in the Senate. Are you willing to accept some kind of cobbled together deal here that might include uh, changes at the border or on immigration policy, if that's what it takes to get Ukraine aid, Israel aid, kind of all of those priorities across the finish line. What does a deal like that look like? Well, it looks like compromise. And I'll have to weigh the equities once I see what the, what the actual deal looks like. But in broad form, I'm definitely willing to move forward on something that supports our ally Ukraine in their struggle against Putin that continues to help Israel defend itself in a way that does not make matters worse. And of course, we do have a problem at the border. And the question is, how do we solve it? I do believe we need more resources there. So uh, the details matter on all of this. Mm -hmm. I haven't made a judgment yet on whether or not I would support, support the final package. But if all aspects of this are reasonable and balanced, then as I consider myself part of the the governing caucus of Congress, I, I would certainly look fairly upon that. Governing for a little while longer. Congressman Kildee, thank you for coming on. Thank you, Garrett. Thanks for watching. Stay updated about breaking news and top stories on the NBC News app or follow us on social media.